Oh boy, let the guitar gods and titans fight again. Nuno, Richard, Battle Royale. Oh man. Hey, it's me, Baxter. Me, Jonathan. Casino Guitars coming at you hard and fast. I love saying that. I love saying it. Oh, I try to say that I go to bed every night and it never works. But anyway. Never. So, there's a little ridiculous riff happening right now. Jonathan, break it down. Well. On the internet. Basically, Mr. Nuno, who has had a big a rise. See what I did there? I. That's their, that's their song. That's really funny. He's had a rise lately in popularity because, you know, they had a, a killer killer new single come out. He had his, his amazing guitar solo, which is really cool. We all, in fact, when it came out, that's probably the first thing in a while that we all stopped what we were doing. We not watched it right then. That were like Derek has um, like too many tacos on Taco Tuesday. That's different. We all that's stopped. A different thing. That's more. different. That's different. Just as impressive, but different. <laughs> um, so anyways, you know, so 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 Nuno is sort of, I mean, not that he's ever been out of the spotlight. He's played for a long time for Rihanna and done all these cool things. She's fairly famous. She's, you know, a little bit. Um, so anyways, he says that that gig is, is tricky. And I, I, it, I'm sure that it actually is. Um, 100%. I agree for, with that. For lots of reasons, probably a lot of people aren't even thinking about. Um, but, you know, he says that a lot of rock guitarists and then names Slash by name okay. would have trouble with it. Now, I read that statement. I, I see that totally different, though. Like, I saw that statement. I haven't read anything else on purpose. Cause you, okay. I look at that statement as like he's using Slash as the icon. Which is what like he said. The icon yeah. of rock guitar. I don't think he was disparaging Slash. I didn't find anything wrong with that statement. You know what I mean? Like, a little odd that he called, you know, use, but but I think he used Slash because, like you said, Slash is That's just That's who we the, think of as, like, he is, he is the rock He's the Jimmy guy. Page of today. Which, and you know. Yeah, that's a new drop. I watched when he posted that. I, I love to read the comments on these things. So I, you know, people are already saying, "Hey, man, lots of lots of guys who are playing in corporate wedding bands, corporate bands do the same thing every weekend all across the country, all across the world." Um, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, okay." To well, varying degrees of <laughs> execution. Do you, um, do you think he posted that just because he was feeling like a little like Rihanna like butt burn? It was like. Ah. I want to be in a cool rock band like Guns N' Roses or something. Like, I don't because I think I mean I mean yes because I, want to I be think in Guns N Roses. yes I, I do want, too. I want to play for Oasis. That'd be the band I want to play for. Band I mean, the world. Rihanna is very famous. Like <laughs> Oasis would be like the band like if they hey we need one more guitar player to play the lead parts. Put me in Oasis. The crazy thing I mean Rihanna it would be such a spectacle like on stage that you got to look cool. Swift. It'd be amazing, you know. So, but anyway, so we're carrying on right. So Richard Fortas, who you've actually gotten to speak with. He is amazing. Well, he's a badass guitar. I mean, he's also a great that, player. He's also a very nice person. Um, seems like a very nice person. Obviously been with Guns N' Roses for a long time. Longer than Slash. <laughs> Which is kind of wild when you think about it. But anyways, um, now here's the thing. He he sort of responded to Nuno. I thought his response was pretty classy. He just said, hey, Nuno is obviously one of the all-time greats. But I have to respectfully disagree. I think Slash could handle, you know, I played with Slash a long time. I think he could handle it around a gig, no problem, no sweat. And also, okay. interesting, interesting bad. thing Richard Fortas was Rihanna's guitar player before Nuna. No kidding. Yes. Oh, man. And so he's he's better. done both gigs. So he, oh. he was Rihanna's guitar player. This is like gossip hour it's, in high I, school. All it's over. amazing, right? This is ridiculous. And we, you know, listen, we're fans of, of both. Um, here's where it gets. A little it's, snarky. It's totally fine so far. What so far, that with? that was great, right? Well, so Nuno kind of took that, I think, as Richard trying to like maybe badmouth him, just make him look bad in front of Slash, one of his heroes. So he long, I mean, a very long retort. Oh, jeez. Um, oh no, Nuno. Basically saying that you know Richard should have known better. Of course, he would never say you know Slash could play the Rihanna game with his eyes closed. Blah blah. Um, you know, and kind of said, all that was kind of still fine with me until he said, who is Richard Fortas? I've never heard you play one note in my 56 years. I've only heard of you from talking the Rihanna camp as, you know, being your replacement, blah, 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 blah. Back up, back up. How old is Nuno? 56, uh, he said. There's no yeah. way. Yeah, he's pretty old. He's that, he, he can't be that old. He's too good looking. He's very good looking. Oh, There's rumors that he's been insane. cryogenically frozen. He's got that, like, vampire blood from his children or something. <laughs> No, I mean, he's a great-looking dude. Okay, he works that, out a lot. That's a little, I, will, I will say But so is Richard Fortas. Very in shape, very tattooed, 
Both of them, I mean, look about as cool as guitar players can be, I think, when they're on stage. I mean, the only time I yeah. get like Nuno the Edge is just like more than words. I mean, you have more than words. Like, as, as, as a song of yours, I mean, that song is like, well, ever campfire, like chicks from the 90s taking off their tops. So, so again, sorry, I said chicks. Me as a, an avid comment reader on, on shit posts and, and, and fights on the internet. I have no idea about it. I was like, I just like to see what people's thoughts are, right? So, like, oh, I, go, I go looking for, like, what are the, what are the two? The two can't. Yeah, I mean, it is funny. The people who are pro Nuno, who are, like, on Nuno's side, which I don't know if there's even a side to be on. I don't know if that's the right response. But oh, there is. they're, like, <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're, they're shade they're throwing on Richard. Is well, he you know he's played other people's stuff, but he's you know he hasn't come up with the riffs like Nuno has for Extreme. I don't know. I mean, like Extreme's awesome. They were a big band in the history, blah blah blah. But they're not Guns N' Roses. Now, granted, Richard didn't write their Guns N' Roses tunes, but I think he has played on albums where he's the session guy, where he is coming up with parts. No, no, just I, just was not in a classic band as they were coming. I apart. can speak from direct personal experience with Richard Forrest. Like I was blown away because I we was on our YouTube channel from a few years back. We we're doing an Echo Park thing, and I sent him like a a track of me doing a rhythm track. I was like, "Hey, solo on this." I I figured I was gonna get some cool pentatonic, wanky stuff. What that dude came back, he wrote a part. It was unbelievable. The melodic nature, and I I know he just he just like busted it out like a, he's like. I'm sure he didn't worry. He wasn't worried about the casino guitars I know. track. I know. It's like he's like, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll do this as a favor for my friend, friend Gabriel. Yeah. You know, it was more one of those things. And it, it was, I was doing like, like 10 times. Like, God, dang. you were pretty blown away by that. Cause just, cause I could tell by I, how you told me about it. I'm not impressed by just like, like that whole time. I'm not saying anybody who does that um, in particular, but that just doesn't, like it's not speed in that. And he has it. Cause he, Richard did it at the end. He saved it till the very end of this track and then he just sort of does these like wizard little sweep runs and little pull offs and hammers in the right way and it's all perfect and I know he wasn't like going back and forth trying to get the right take he's a very polished player which do knows too but it was too. good though and yeah. it was like it was but he you know part of that man is he can chicken pick he can do all that country stuff but, and all and the and I've, I've worked with a bunch of these great session players and a lot of them are so sterile too like they it's are true. they're amazing but it's just like I don't some know, of them cool. are you said you did the cool parts you play great guitar that's neat but Fortis, I mean, he wouldn't be with Guns N' Roses as long if he wasn't a phenom. Yeah. A phenom, as you might call it. Nuno, obviously a phenom, too. Like, I don't understand how his fingers do that stuff and how he looks so young. Craiglin, she's stealing the blood of his children as a vampire would. But, um, <laughs> no, I mean, there, it, I, I, when I heard about this when I came into the shop, I had to take, like, kids to camp and vets and stuff. I was a little bit late today. I hate being late. But, um, and I was like, whoa, there's a rift between two amazing guitar players. That is stupid. I know that's kind of what I hate, right? Like, like I thought the conversation was pretty good. Like, it would have been fun if they could have just talked it out about Slash. And you know, Slash. I think it was all a misunderstanding. Well, I, I don't think I don't think Richard's comment seems snarky at all either. I don't think it was the problem. Yeah. Like, it's just like those dumb girls and boys in high school is texting. You read inflection on a text, and you think something else of it. And I, I'm sure Nuno regrets what he texted. And I hope he. I think he does. Like he's maybe he will. From all I've heard about him. He is a. He seems like guy. well, he seemed like a really nice guy in the Rick Beato interview. I would, um, I would feel horrible. I think his, I think his concern was that he was disparaging Slash. The Slash thought that he was disparaging him, and that was not his intent. But this is my ass around the back, monkey style. Like Slash is obviously going to listen to Richard Fortas because they're buddies, like, and they and they're in the same band. It's Can I give a, my? Uh, my take? Yeah. Slash doesn't give a rat's ass. <laughs> it's kind of like Eric Clapton doesn't have you. Slash is like fanning himself with money saying, what What? What did you guys talk about? <laughs> Richard, what? Richard what? who? Who's in my band? <laughs> Axel what? Oh, God. Just bring me another boa constrictor. I mean, because talk about riffs, you know. Sad Whatever you think of Slash. I got so sad over the weekend. I saw there was these pet like thing. I saw one of my feeds came in. They had to dis dispose or like kill some snakes. They came in. And they had the ones register which one they had to kill. And they killed this dude's like twenty year old boa constrictor or something like by accident. They got their grab oh, the wrong snake and they, they nail gunned it or something. Oh, I, I was I don't understand having a pet snake anyway. I think it's weird and crazy. Yeah, but oh my god, my heart broke because it wants to eat you. It wants to eat your children and you. But Everything. then you hear like the anguish of the man who owns a snake. Oh, yeah. I was. I mean, it's I was, a long time to have, have had a pet. Yeah, and then I mean, if you're a snake, I said, come in, come in, and put a nail gun in your puppy's head. I mean, I, and they're That's like, weird. oh, and, and the cop, the police, the, the wildlife 
people, I felt so bad for them. I was thinking about Slash as I was watching this. Because I was like, oh, he would have it on his shoulder. He'd fly out and he'd kill everybody. But the officers that did it, they felt horrible. And it's like, it was a mistake. And I was like, oh, man. my God. Like, they just... They just killed this man's animal, and it was oh, it's horrible. Slash would have made it all good. That was my point. Like Slash and Rob Thomas could have come in there in that room. And the cold November rain. I, yeah, I mean, like that model from that video could walk in there. That's what you need. Rob Thomas, Slash, and that model from November rain <laughs> makes everything good, right? Sounds like a decent. Uh, Rob, Rob Thomas makes everyone happy. I like Rob Thomas. He just, he, I mean, he's just a happy thing. He's tall. And he's good looking. This stuff. He's always good looking. He, he a, sings great, catchy songs. Yeah, he does that thing, you know? <sighs> so we, we hope this all just, these guys have talked off channel since then. And, this is, I, and what what's neat about this, though, at my little thoughts went collecting lighters, was like, <laughs> maybe this was all sort of just like PR. Here's awesome. to light stuff up. Just kind of like, let's get some attention going. They're like, here's what we're going to do. And then they're laughing about it. That that would that makes which, me happy if that which was true. I like to think that's the case because it's so stupid. It's so dumb. They're both phenomenal guitar players, it's both in their own rights. But in like in another note, like any anybody likes to diss either one of these guitar players or any guitar players that are on these major things, they're so much better than you think. When you sit in a room with them, that that is true. So much better. Like even like like was, you think you're okay, and then you're like, oh no. <laughs> it's it's just like whenever you it's you, different level. Let's just say you think you're good looking, and I've had this experience. I'm like, man, I'm okay looking. I I'm hanging out with John Mayer. Mm. You realize that all goes out the window. You're sitting there looking at him. You're looking at yourself or imagining what you look like. You're like, his body's a wonderland. Hit everything about him is a wonderland. It's just frustrating. It's um. And like and these players are that way too. Like we we talk about like guitar bands you don't think of sometimes. Like Third Eye Blind, that guy shreds. That guy is actually mind blowingly good. Yeah, like, the, the guitar like, player. Like, I don't know one his of name. our personal favorites, like Queens of the Stone Age. We all know the cool guitar players, but those guys shred as well in real life. And like, they can turn it on. And when you can turn it on in front of twenty thousand people every night, and that's different too. That's the, it just a, makes for a different level of it's playing. It's different it? and make people want to play guitar and make people yep. realize you're a rock star and you're fifty something. Yep, it's true. And, it, and you're still. Just shredding it, killing it. Every girl in that audience wants to like be your best friend, and every guy wants to house in pals. Just pals, like write letters to each other. I said it's a PG, it's a G G rated show today. Gosh, I'm gonna get a letter, write a letter, you know. And um, I'm gonna go see Oppenheimer this week too. You're gonna hope you come to. I'm open. Mm-hmm. Movie tickets on me, baby. Let's 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 get this done. <laughs> but we'll let you know what we think about that after. I hear it's great. And I think Barbie made 155 million over the weekend. I think this one already made like 80 or 90 million, which is crazy for like a three-hour talking film. You know, pretty much in black and white. You know, right. it's not, but it's, it might as well be. You know, just like with a guy that just eats almonds and like lost like you know 50 pounds to make this movie. Wow. Yeah, he, he's skinny as heck because apparently Oppenheimer had a weird diet. Okay. I think you have to be a weird guy to come up with the world-ending science. It's pretty tight. We're excited about. It. So hopefully this isn't the world ending for our two shredders of awesome black hair with tattoos. It's not. They'll be fine. They're probably friends and they probably don't care about it. It's probably all made up anyway. So we just all helped feed that fire a little bit. Yes. Click like, subscribe. Hit the bell. Let's all be friends. Just get along. Like Mr. Rogers says. I think that was somebody else said. Yeah, we just all get along. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. He was in Los Angeles. That's if you're old enough, you know what I'm talking about. If you're young enough, you have Surely to- Mr. Rogers said it too. I am obsessed with Mr. Rogers. So that's another story though. We're leaving. There Thank you, you so much for joining us. Sweaters for everyone. Peace be with you all. Goodbye.